Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick video answering one of the most frequent questions I get here on the channel regarding digital imaging, and that is, which camera should I buy to take on my trip? Now, here in 2023, there are so many good options. The four that I have on camera right now are all excellent. If you're looking for an action camera, a point-and-shoot, a full-frame mirrorless, or a bridge-style point-and-shoot, these are all ideal. But Ultimately, they don't really necessarily answer your question because I don't have enough information to do so. We've got different price points. We've got different form factors. There are so many things at play. And then ultimately, what do you expect to get out of the camera? How do you plan on using it? So I don't know all of that, but what I do know is I can tell you what to buy that will give you what you definitely already do not have. Because even if you have a smartphone that can take great stills and great video, much like all of these, and I'm in no way saying that your smartphone can replace any of these, because it really can't. I look at all of these as being complementary devices. Let's talk about where we have no overlap. Two cameras that I purchased this past year that are unlike anything else in my bag and it's these two right here. So I've got Insta360's X3 on the right. This retails for 450 US dollars. I'll include a link in the description. And then I have its more expensive and slightly older sibling, uh, the one inch 360 edition. And I could go through saying the whole name, but it's a waste of time. Uh, 799 US dollars for this uh, top heavy 360 camera on the left. So what makes these so unique? Well. As I just mentioned, all of these cameras overlap in still and video capability. They all deliver uh, very different results, but they absolutely overlap. What these two do is, yes, they overlap, but then they give you something that these cameras cannot do in their wildest dreams, which is 360 video as well as 360 degree stills. And while that's not a new thing, the quality and overall capability that both of these provide is unmatched by anything else on the market without stepping up to professional, incredibly expensive solutions that, of course, cannot fit in your pocket. So why am I recommending these? Well, I've already answered that question. Um, I don't know what you already own, and that also becomes part of trying to answer what you should buy. Um, if you already own a 360 camera and it's one of these, well, then you pretty much have what I think is the best supplement to what you probably already have, a smartphone. Because after all, most of you rely on a smartphone, but your smartphone cannot do what these can. And when I say overlap, the beauty for me of having a 360 solution like either of these is that if you really want to enjoy memories with your family, friends, or be taken right back to where you were, that's what these deliver. Now with the quality of two one inch sensors, this $800 uh, camera will give you the best low light as well as overall capability from any 360 uh, consumer grade camera on the market. Uh, battery life is fairly solid, it is expensive, but keep in mind, when you buy something like this, as I've already stated over and over again, you are getting something that none of these can deliver. Whether we're talking about the best full frame, really the best camera on the planet in the A1, at least until Sony replaces this, which is over 6,000 US dollars body alone, not inclusive of a lens or a grip, or we're talking about an RX100, which is gonna set you back over a grand, or of course, an RX10 uh, bridge style camera. This is. I'm going to say the latest, which is now very old, the Mark IV, which is also going to set you back big money, over a thousand US dollars. Um, or the little action camera over here on the right, you know, that's going to be the most affordable of the group, but this is going to do pretty poorly in low light, but it has that water resistance. It still can't do what this can. So, um, and by the way, there's a one inch sensor in this action camera, a one inch sensor in the RX100, and a one inch sensor in the RX10 IV. So that's the same Sony one inch sensor that is inside of this. Now, yes, Insta360 is claiming they partnered with Leica. You know, I, that doesn't really even matter to me. I look at the Leica as branding. What I look at are the results. And here's the bottom line. The video that you get out of this is stunning, especially in good lighting. Um, a good example was you know, for me going to a sporting event like a New York Giants game, in spite of the fact that they just got eliminated from the playoffs, I hadn't gone in ages. And we went as a family, we saw a victory, 
And because I had this with me, I was actually able to capture that final second because the game against the Jaguars did go down to the wire. And I was able to capture really, in my opinion, the feeling that we had, the emotion, because you actually can see an experience for me and my my family members re-experience that moment in time of that victory because I have a 360 degree uh, over 6K resolution video of the Giants winning and us celebrating in our seats with fans around us. So it really takes me right back there. And, you know, the same can be said for how I use this through the course of my honeymoon. Lightweight, incredibly effective. The only thing you have to be aware of, batteries. Now, it is modular. Um, I don't think batteries, maybe now they're available, but ahead of my honeymoon, I couldn't buy additional batteries. So that was a drawback. That meant runtime was my biggest, uh, you know, problem, essentially, was that I knew at a certain time this was going to run out of juice. So um, what did I do to compensate? Well, I picked up the only way I could try to top off battery life, uh, and it is fragile. That's one thing I will say about this, because you have two lens assemblies you need to protect. If those get scratched, you're in deep, deep trouble, because it will impact your images. And unlike all of these other cameras, except for maybe a smartphone, your lenses are generally protected, uh, whether you've got a lens cap on or a built-in lens cap or you know an actual protective um, this isn't a lens cap, but lens cover that is clear to protect the actual lens inside of the, or that the action camera is relying on. So fragility, this has no water resistance, um, no dust resistance. So you do have to baby this and make sure you aren't going to damage it, which is why this wouldn't be my pick for everyone. But for those of you looking for the highest possible quality and something that can actually shoot um, decent quality in low light, this is where it's at. Now, as I move the A1, which is really my favorite camera, but also my heaviest right now, it's the X3 that comes to mind. Now, I've got this one in a cage. As I mentioned, it retails for 450. You have a much larger display, a display I might add, I wish this one had, uh, because it does give you the ability to actually see what you're filming, whereas that little thumbnail on here, which is really just Insta360 building off the modular older uh, 1R that I have right here, and that is exactly what they did, another video for another day. Here we have a redesign. So this looks just like the X3, uh, X2 I mean, but the X3 has a much bigger display, as well as quite a bit more going for it. Now some people will say just buy the X2 for $100 less. I can tell you that's not a bad option either, but if I were you, I would stick with this for the larger display as well as the nuance that it gets because we do have basically a much closer uh, camera to being an action camera here. So that means the best of both worlds. You don't have that with the one inch edition right here that I was just talking about. So what this means is it can get wet. It means that it can get a little bit beaten up, but the same issue regarding its lenses exists. You have to baby these things. Now, you can buy aftermarket um, lens protectors for both of these. Insta does make them as well. I purchased one for this at launch. The reason I never ended up using it is because it does cause flare. So the answer there is, is that if you tend to be more clumsy, you know that you you know inevitably will end up scratching this one way or another, use the lens guards it's going to be worthwhile to protect your investment, uh, even in the absence of degrading your quality a little bit. But if you're like me, and you know it's very rare that you drop things unless you've been injured in a car accident, uh, then this, you know, you're not going to want to put anything over this and impede quality. Uh, now, big difference between these two is low light. This doesn't have a one-inch sensor, let alone two of them, it has something more comparable to what you'll find inside of a smartphone these days. So uh, the 360 quality is still going to be excellent, not quite as good as the one-inch edition, but still very good. And I would say that in good lighting conditions, you'll be hard-pressed to see a difference. But in the low lighting arena, well, there it becomes clear that the $800 one has the better chops as long as you don't leave, um, you know, certain automatic settings automatic. Uh, but more important, again, water resistance, uh, as well as the ability to use this as a single lens action cam. Now I say action cam because again, this reminds me more of an action camera, but I do wish Insta would give single 
uh, lens capability to this. And if you're wondering what, did that, what does that mean, it means that if you don't want to use 360 and you just want a single perspective, a regular flat image like you would get out of any of these cameras or your smartphone, you can do that with this as well. And the resolution here is over 5K, so that's still going to exceed 4K. Um, again, no one-inch sensor, so quality not quite as good as what you're going to get out of a one-inch sensor. Uh, dynamic range as well, but still really, really good. But that's still not what makes these things you know, in my opinion, the must have. So what is it? I've explained to you the feature set. Um, this is not modular, by the way. You just have a replaceable battery that you pop in here. In this cage, do not buy the small rig cage that um, Insta made in conjunction with small rig because it's really just the one for the X2 um, and it blocks the battery bay. Uh, shame on Insta for not basically refunding everyone like myself who bought this. And by the way, if you think I have any connection to Insta or this is a sponsored video, it absolutely is not. So um, forget about the cage because it's expensive also. But uh, the beauty here, again, is that inside of Insta's software, which is on your mobile phone, you can, and that'll be a video I do for another day, you can select your point of interest, which will be your point of focus. It will track that point. You can change perspective. You can also pull 360 degree stills from any of that content. So basically for me, I know that if I have either one of these or both of these in my extremely light uh, bag uh, that I carry these days, when I take something with me, if my body permits it, I know that if I have one of them or both, I'm going to basically be able to capture everything. Am I going to be able to artistically uh, frame something the way I would with this? Absolutely not. Am I going to be able to stick something on, you know, a car like I would with this and not worry? I mean, you certainly could do that with the X3. I would not do that with the one inch edition. Um, and, you know, would I have something point and shoot in my pocket, let's say for going out at night? dinner with friends where I want to get a shot that's going to be better than my smartphone. Not with this, but with this, you're in that realm if you know what you're doing. So that's another interesting thing about comparing these two. And while you don't have a telephoto lens on either of these, of course, with the one inch sensor here, you will have some crop ability, which will act as a zoom. Now, when it comes to something like a bridge style camera, this to me is really the best option for the majority of travelers who really want more than a point and shoot camera, but do not want interchangeable lenses. But yet again, we're faced with the same thing. This cannot do what these two can. I mean, I will go back to video I've shot with this and catch things that I didn't know happened when I was there. That really is rarely going to happen with any of these. Okay. I'm not saying you won't see something that you didn't see the first time. But here, with these two, you can look 360 degrees, and I guarantee you, you will see things even the second, third, and fourth time you look at footage that you didn't see the first, second, or third time necessarily, but you did on the fourth. So, pretty much rounds things out. I wanted this to be a quick video, but this was really spurred by my personal experience and also just talking to friends and family, because clearly I can't talk to all of you unless I make a video, right? Although, you know, we'll see how things change as the channel continues to evolve. But this was really what I wanted to make clear is that if you're looking for that next best camera to take with you, wherever it may be, it doesn't have to be a vacation, right? That doesn't overlap with everything you already have. And that may only be one of these, a smartphone. These are the cameras to do it. And yes, there are a lot of people who will tell you that, oh, the still images look just like the quality from a smartphone or worse. Yeah, but a smartphone can't shoot 360. And if you're using this one, it looks better than a smartphone. And furthermore, uh, again, the ability to take yourself right back to that experience, it just, it can't be done the way, you know, these two can on any of these. So while the A1 is my favorite camera, doesn't mean it's the camera that's going to go everywhere with me. We all know the smartphone is going to go everywhere with you, but it's not close to being a favorite camera of mine. So I'm looking for something that can deliver what the other products can't. And that's exactly what these two can do with still, you know, maintaining the ability to overlap and give you quality still images, uh, but the ability to deliver video and 360 
images that simply could not be attained with any of these devices. So I hope that makes it clear. Again, Insta360 changing the game. Let's hope they continue to do that. Let's hope they continue to give us revolutionary products, in my opinion. You know, my 360 experience began with Rilo. They tanked, um, but I'm glad to see Insta hasn't given up. And in fact, they're changing the DI business. And I'm just waiting for all the other players like Sony to get up off their hands, Canon, Nikon, talking about you two, um, whoever your favorite is, Fuji, wake up. It's a little weird that this Chinese company is, you know, just changing the entire landscape while the digital imaging monsters are just waiting to, I guess, have to buy Insta360. I don't know. But either way, this to me remains the best answer in 2023 to that question. If you're looking for what you should purchase ahead of your next trip, well, if you don't already have one of these two, this is where it's at. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.